All right, man. Oh, okay. Whoa, let, me that. Just get, let me put the background <laughs> on. <laughs> that looks great. like a psychedelic trip background. Now I see an egg. <laughs> yeah, that's a Twitter reg. That's a Twitter reg NFT from 2014. Um, wow. Let me see here. Can we get this one? Uh, it's an X copy. Let's just get none. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, first of all, where are you? I'm in New York City. Okay, cool. Um, Andrew, we are good friends, so this is going to be both fun and also uh, very educational because. Most of us, in fact, everyone on this call is a DeFi nerd, including myself. And so a deep tech project, which I would classify Nillion as, is, uh, and, and learning about it, it's going to be uh, extremely educational. So um, I think before we start, it, it could be really interesting to, to talk about health for a second, because we're both obsessed with it. I see you're drinking something weird. Oh, could be it, water. No, this is, uh, this is uh, Sistanch tea. And uh, okay. this, this right next to me is uh, our, oh, you can't see it because let me just take it, this blur. It's Inner Eco, which, yep. as you know, came from our, uh, our mentor. Uh, I mean, uh, all around me is just health stuff. I mean, Lily's, Lily's truth, truth approved chocolates. <laughs> it's everywhere. I got my pumpkin seed oil there. <laughs> uh, so your... Um... You, you have infinite resources and you've been obsessed about health and fitness uh, for a while. And I, I think it'd be interesting for you to share, like, what, what do you think is a good 80-20 for, because like everyone here works a lot. They're like crypto is insane. It could consume you, as you know, it can be all consuming. And especially when we're in a bull market or a super cycle, things just get crazy. So um, what, what do you think is like a good 80 20 for people firstly um uh something interesting about uh, uh resources being infinite i i actually realized the other day that uh, jeff bezos can only buy i think something like half or three quarters of manhattan with his net worth so even the richest man in the world doesn't have unlimited resources which was an interesting thought experiment for me as you know we go on this path to continually make money and where it kind of ends um in terms of how i uh, uh, deal with, uh, you know, starting two companies now and having started many more. Um, I, I think there are like pillars, which I focus on. So the first and most important pillar is diet and then sleep probably equal first. Right. And, um, really it's about adopting the mentality or framework, um, within that, uh, you know, within those, those categories and, and there's probably an exercise is probably another one, for example, uh, that allow me to optimize my, uh, life towards, you know, somewhere, something that, that, uh, that, that achieves the goal that I'm after. So for example, if the goal that I'm after is to create companies and is to, uh, to do really well, um, by way of, uh, you know, economics, then it'll be uh, optimizing for my mind. If it's, you know, to do with other things, then, you know, if it was weightlifting, it would be a different diet. If it was, um, you know, uh, enjoyment, perhaps it would be a different diet as well, or, you know, short-term enjoyment, long-term enjoyment. And, you know, as I delve more into the world of um, biohacking, I realized that there are certain things which people can choose uh, to do, which uh, optimize different parts of uh, their their wellness. So you know everything from sexual well, wellness to hair growth to um, to uh, skin to etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, um, but in general, the pillars are super important. As I said, diet and sleep. So I try and keep a, a normal rhythm when it comes to sleep. I have several sleep stacks that I use. If I you know I have the problem of waking up and not being not being able to go back to sleep. So I have several sleep stacks that I use. To get back to sleep if uh, I need to, but you know, oftentimes I try and just keep a calm mind and and uh, make sure that you know um, I am uh, I am able to do it without without chemicals or without I, with natural natural means. I, I really like the idea of different stacks based on what mode you're in, and I think now, arguably, I mean, you're you're running multiple projects. Uh, you're in hardcore build mode. Uh, and so I'm excited to dive into that. Um, 
can you just share like how you got here, how you got to Nilly and, and your professional background for everyone who hasn't caught up on that and doesn't know who you are yet? Sure, sure. So Nillian, uh, so, you know, uh, the first thing is uh, I started Hedera Hashgraph uh, and the reserve protocols, but even before then, um, so I guess it's, it's worth starting uh, from when I was a lawyer first, because the thing is, you got to go, I think that the, 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 the strength was that I started within the matrix. Uh, of you know law, uh, uh, banking, because um, I was a banker for a year before I was a lawyer, and then I moved on after that to uh, to doing things which were very unconventional. So the first was internet marketing in two thousand and seven, and I think the thing to notice there is that you know it was my first break away from convention and my first real focus on uh, being contrarian, really, right. So my professional background starts very, very, um, very standard, very, uh, you know, consensus, if you like. And then internet marketing happened. All these kids were making money and I was like, what's going on here? And then after internet marketing, um, uh, blockchain happened in 2017. Uh, well, I bought Bitcoin in 2011, but 2017, I started, uh, you know, Hedera and Reserve, uh, sorry, Hedera in 2017, Reserve in 2019, and then, uh, you know, uh, Nillian in 2020, 2021, say. But uh, I think that the legal background and the, uh, you know, the, the, the banking background gave me sort of a, a way to understand professionalism, the way to understand the value of consensus, but the way to understand the real way to, to, to think about, you know, non-consensus decision-making and uh, projects and initiatives. And so, yeah, that, that brings us to Nillian. I mean, when, when you think about uh, Hedera Hashgraph, that was kind of a, uh, a non-consensus way of looking at blockchain because it was, uh, uh, it was a non-blockchain non that was focused on scalability. If you look at reserve, it was, you know, crypto was going up and down. It was a stability mechanism for cryptocurrencies. If you look at, um, you know, uh, Nillian, there are several what I call contrarian narratives that um, that occur with Nillian, right? And they are um, taking public blockchains private, uh, or rather, uh, you know, giving a public blockchain a private utility, consensus without computation, uh, you know, storing all your secrets online for people to see, <laughs> which you know they can't, they just can't see it in the form that they that they need to see it. Um, in an unencryptionless way, and then having permissionless decentralized nodes that don't focus on a on a immutable ledger, but rather on verifiable computations. So all these things are really interesting, um, you know, uh, narratives. And you can see the pattern through where I've been, like from lawyer to internet marketer, mark internet marketer to to to, to blockchain. Uh, very early, you know, blockchain to non-blockchain, non-blockchain now to you know, not even. This is a verifiable compute network, not even a distributed ledger. It's always kind of pushing towards something that is non-consensus, right? Always, not, always, and this is why when 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 we when we when you think I think about the successes I've had and the, the large successes, I really put it down to um, this uh, this sense that I have that something is right, um, which sometimes is wrong, right? But I have a sense. Uh, that, that is right, but other people don't believe it's, uh, it's right yet, but it makes sense to me. And that's the most important thing, right? Um, so Would you say that, that, I mean, you're just to interrupt very quickly. This is the thing that I know that like, th I think this is your biggest North star is betting on contrarian perspectives and narratives uh, and, and like understanding something that not everyone sees yet or, and, and they may disagree with. Um, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. You know, there, there, there isn't one uh, thing that uh, has, you know, because there are other things, right? My ability to execute, my ability to network, uh, um, you know, my ability to, to, to convince people to join part of a team, um, just sometimes like raw intelligence, the fact that I'm kind of obsessed with 
uh, crypto or I get obsessed with things where he's like, there are multiple characteristics. But what I would say is that I can apply these characteristics to something like law and get good results, right? I can apply them to something like widgets and get standard, like smaller results. But if I apply them to something that I believe is contrarian and right, right, that's where the results become truly exponential, right? To the, to the, to, to, to quote my friend Devin Finzer, who started OpenSea, he's like, "Look, I I I didn't know that uh, that it was going to work out. That OpenSea was going to become really big. I just I just stuck I just stuck through it, right? It, it just uh, I just didn't give up, you know. And I kind of believed in where the the industry was going. So you know, he just had this firm belief, and I had the firm belief as well. I just didn't think that uh, NFTs would pop as soon as 2021, right? Um, but my point is that that uh, I think that it is that that you need all these other skills to be able to take advantage of any opportunity, right? And I do I do recognize something. I never told you this, David, but um, throughout my career, right, uh, I started off in anti-risk in, in environments, so banking and law. Then went to internet marketing, which is some risk, but you know it was not. Then went to blockchain now i'm at like let's go baby right like you know <laughs> let's 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 try but it's funny because i perceive it in my mind now because i'm so uh I, like risk is like a, a brother to me I, I i understand it a lot better but i have definitely become more and more risk on I, I say now that i don't want to get involved with the project unless it can potentially change the world and unless i see the contrarian uh narrative that i also believe and when people ask me where it comes from, I think, you know, I grew up in, um, in uh, the 80s and 90s in Australia. This is just after the abol uh, abolition of the white Australia policy and uh, in a re really rough part of Australia. So the consensus view of Australia and the tall poppy syndrome, et cetera, et cetera, it, it was never, uh, it always reinforced that the consensus is going to do me wrong and I have to find something else, you know, to, to do me right. And that's kind of, <laughs> excuse me, that's kind of why um, I think I have this like really consensus view. I also think that, you know, some of it happened because, I mean, there was just so many things like working in, work in banking. I hated banking, work in law. I hated law. Be really like buy girls flowers. Like that never worked for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, all sorts of stuff that the, that the consensus would tell me back when I was in Australia, right? Um, that just didn't work for me, and it gave me a, a more contrary narrative. That plus, so so you know, that plus um, plus having the raw intelligence to be able to figure out, hey, this is actually a good narrative, you know. And then, um, yeah, and then and then one one other weird thing that I have noticed is to align myself or to, to meet people who are very intelligent too, but live life outside the bounds of a regular, um, a regular cadence, right? We all know them, these like weird guys who are just ultra smart at something, right? Sometimes it's, you know, I mean, it could be, it could be anything. You and I both know a couple of these people and it's in those people and in listening and understanding and, uh, discarding what they say about topics that they have nothing to do with and seeing the topics where they are uh, very extraordinary at that, you know, that, uh, that lead to you coming across contrarian ideas and, and therefore outcomes. That was Luna, right? You had a friend who disappeared basically for six months or a year and he came out of the dark depths of his apartment or house and he was like, dude, Luna, because of this, this, and this. Oh yeah, and you have, I mean, I, you've surrounded yourself with these people. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of like a truffle network you've set up. Yes. So, uh, Luna was one. Um, there are a couple of others um, that you know. That there, uh, no, it was it was not Luna. It was uh, Chainlink that he came up with. He was like, buy chain, and man, I, I, you know, I bought Chainlink in the ICO, sold at 8x. And then uh, I thought I was a genius. And then it was at like 80 cents or something. And then he's like, hey, you should, you should buy it again. And then, you know, I bought it and then sold it at 4X. And now it's at like, you know, 20 plus. Anyway, <laughs> my point is that, that, uh, that yeah, I, you know, I align, 
I, I, I like finding people who are weird, but intelligent, you know? And so that's kind of what, um, yes. So you're right. One, one was Luna. The other one was, um, uh, chain link there have been several others like yeah you know, um one was <laughs> ichi which you just see like right now is just popped um yeah there are there are there are tons of them okay so uh oh, we're and, here to talk about in different oh, on different parts of life as well so we're talking about crypto here but you know in every single part of life i found that the way to get extraordinary results is to find those outliers and have an open mind about how they approach problems yeah i love that uh, okay, so you're here to to talk about Nillion, mm -hmm. and uh, we have so many other topics we could we could talk about. I wish you were here for six hours uh, and not ninety minutes, but we'll perhaps do another one of these. Um, in my simple brain, I understand Nillion to be almost like blockchain 2.0, and obviously the Battle of Layer Ones was like the most lucrative narrative to understand in the last year. And we're still seeing that theory and narrative play out. Uh, but like, am I accurate in thinking of Nillion as like a better decentralized um, trustless version of current blockchain 1.0? No, <laughs> not exactly, right? And uh, let, me, let me tell you why. So, when it comes down to what Nillion actually is, it's a set of permissionless nodes which can do arbitrary computations where the result of the computation is verifiably correct to a, you know, it could be Byzantine fault, but uh, you sent me a question before on Telegram that that, that algorithmic level can be set by the, the algorithm that you apply. Right, so so you, you because you're receiving all of the data back from the nodes, right? You basically can apply an algorithm which sets the fault tolerant level. Right? How, how so, is that different from current ledger nodes, for example? Uh, current ledger nodes typically run on like either a, a sort of a proof of work where one uh, one um, a proof of work or a proof of stake or or a, a way that the nodes have to communicate with each other, right? This isn't that. So, for, well, it's different because we're not solving for uh, a, um, a ledger. We're solving for just a computation which can be verified. And the second thing is um, there, is no there is no communication between any of the nodes, right? Uh, the nodes receive the information and then they reconstruct the result uh, locally in accordance to an algorithm. That algorithm has a fault tolerant level uh, attached to it, right? So, um, but my point is that in an arbitrary compute network, uh, you could feasibly have an immutable ledger if you really wanted to, right? We deliberately didn't do that or didn't want to do that. A couple of reasons. The first is that we solve for, um, for, uh, uh, for value not not uh, not ordinary. It isn't, uh, you know. So we we are a network focus focus on value. We could put order in, but it isn't the current uh, primary motive. Uh, and uh, what we're trying to do is we're not trying to go up against layer ones. We're trying to enhance them, right? And that's really a, a strategic a strategic difference. So instead of you know, I I built Hedera and man, it was such a shit show trying to go up against the uh, Ethereum community all the time. I would have much preferred if we're like, hey, we're gonna help Ethereum in this way. PS, there are other things the network does, which are cool, different. So, you know, for example, Nillion has the information theoretic security. It has, um, uh, uh, you know, an, 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 a non-encrypted property. It has this strange uh, ability to, 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 to run very efficient compute. So these are things where, um, you know, and, and private compute, right? These are things that we can offer to an existing layer one. And then we say, hey, PS, there, because of uh, these, these uh, uh, strange, uh, you know, uh, features, we can then create a whole new suite of decentralized use cases, 
you know? So that's how it's kind of different. Can you, can you just touch on some of those use cases? Because when I read them, I, I get extremely excited. Um, can, can you touch on some of those? Sure. So uh, there are the, the uh, features of say, you know, uh, providing privacy to other blockchains, pure computation functions, um, information theoretic security, which is a non-encrypted and, uh, you know, in inverted commas, unhackable, depending on how you define hackability. But, you know, no, where computing power can't unencrypt a specific file. These uh, factors create really interesting and weird use cases. So, for example, a decentralized glass pass. Um, you know, it's funny because if or, or one password, if you know, most people store their private keys on a centralized in a centralized way. So you're trying to protect a decentralized network using a centralized storage solution, right? In this case, what you could do is put your theoretically put your uh, private key on the Nilian network. It never is constructed, right? All that's constructed is the signed transactions that go directly onto the blockchain or whatever blockchain you want when you actually require that to that, that to happen, right? That's an, that's an example. So, um, you know, a decentralized last pass or one password, decentralized fire blocks. I mean, fire blocks is now the way that it's a billion dollar company. It's the way that um, uh, venture capitalists and, you know, large funds store their private keys, right? That's another example. Um, decentralized KYC and AML um, because the network by virtue of the fact that the information gets, you know, your identity, for example, it, it, which is just a piece of data, gets transformed and then split into, you know, or horcruxed, I call it, like, like Voldemort, into uh, the, the node network um, in an information theoretic secure way. It basically means that you can store your identity, store in inverted commas, your, your identity nowhere, you know, in the Nillion network. This is what Nillion means is a whole lot of nothing. So, you know, in the Nillion network where it's information theoretic secure and thus GDPR compliant as well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, bring it back whenever you want. So, or give it to someone else or verify to someone else or in its, pure, in its uh, final form, allow that person to be able to verify that you are who you say you are without even accessing the identity on the network, right? You can just compare you can ask for a compare uh, function without um, ever sending the actual information to the other person. These are these are some ideas, you know, some uh, instances of use cases that uh, are quite um, quite uh, specific to to Nillion. However, there are other use cases. So, a, a general purpose compute network, which which has inbuilt privacy and, and verification of compute could act as a secure enclave, a decentralized secure enclave for blockchains. So, you know, Ethereum needs to send a private computation somewhere. That computation theoretically could be sent to the Nilian network. The computation could be run in a decentralized way as opposed to using, you know, an uh, Intel SGX chip or something, and then sent back to the Nilian network. Um, uh, sorry, sent back to the Ethereum network with an, an output as well as uh, verification on, on the Nillion network that it was performed um, uh, correctly or you know, verifiably. So then you, know, you, have, you have those sorts of implications. And you know, if you have this decentralized meta, meta infrastructure layer, you potentially can create uh, interoperability. My, my point is that you have arbitrary compute, right? Now I'm not promising all these things. It depends on who builds off the network, but I will say that we are mostly focused, you know, we have a very evangelizing technology, a phenomenal team, um, you know, and, but what, if I learned something from Reserve and, uh, and uh, Hedera, it was that we have to focus on and be completely obsessed with the ecosystem. And that's kind of where we are, pushing towards now. So everything, the token economics, the founding team, a lot of their compensation is going into the, uh, is, is it predicated on them creating companies that um, get traction off of the network? So this is very different to the way I created <laughs> the compensation. Of founding it's, team. it's like uh, building, building vesting. <laughs> yes. Building vesting. Yes. Correct. We call it the, the FE program, the founding entrepreneurs program. I mean, there are several things that I did in inverted commas wrong, or I would have done differently in parts that I'm kind of executing on uh, right now, if that, if that makes sense. 
Okay. Uh, holy shit. So many questions and a lot to unpack there. Uh, the, the, so, okay. Use cases. We were, you, you gave some incredible examples. Um, what do you think will be built first on Nillion if you had to guess? Um, or, or where has like a lot of the interest and excitement been in the conversations you've had and also with the team and the founders building vesting? I mean, the interest and excitement comes from the, you know, anyone who actually reviews the white paper and the mathematics, uh, and we have a math white paper coming out very soon, but anyone that actually reviews them will become, anyone who understands math or physics, you know, and gets into the, uh, the core infrastructure will become very um, enamored. You know, we, we found that venture funds have hit us up, uh, like some of the top venture funds in Silicon Valley have hit us up on our cold email. So, you know, info at <laughs> saying, hey, we, we, someone forwarded us the white paper, we read it. This is amazing. You know, the, the, um, the person who due diligence the math for me at the University of London Royal Holloway um, she ended up joining the team as well. She's like, oh, this is super cool. So firstly, the, the technology is um, attractive. Secondly, the, um, the team, there are founders of billion dollar companies that aren't me that have joined the team as well. Well, I can't really announce. I will, I will announce them uh, within the next probably two weeks. All right. But also I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid a situation where we have, you know, a overly hyped token that then pops like uh, ICP, you know, uh, upon launch. That, that is a bad situation for any community, you know? And so I'm happy to do conversations like this with smaller, more specific communities. Um, but the team is getting people excited. Um, the approach, the, the fact that we've, you know, thought about it. And then, yes, some of the use cases as well. Now, which use cases will become the most, um, you know, the most used? I'm not 100% sure, but what, but what I, it's like, it's like saying, hey, here's the Ethereum network and here are the use cases that will, you know, we, we, we couldn't have known that like a decentralized exchange or NFTs was, were, were the ones that were going to pop. But I can tell you that in terms of engineering, um, you know, when you look at a network, the first thing, besides from building the sort of uh, architecture and the, uh, and the, 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 the initial challenge of translating the math into actual engineering and having the nodes work, you know, in the, in the way that the algorithm suggests that they should. Um, outside of that, what the first sort of function I, I believe uh, will need to be is, is, is authentication. How do you authenticate with uh, a blockchain? Well, you use your private key, public private key, pure functionality. With the Nillion network, it's a little bit different. You can use your private key, or a private key, but you would also want to authenticate with other things. You could say, for example, use your face, or you could use a picture of your identity, or you could use a multi-factor authentication process, or you could, and then you would layer these, right? So, uh, but either way, like, you know, the unlock of that in, uh, information um, is something that is very uh, basic to any decentralized network, but it is particularly important with us because um, it, is, it, is, it isn't a single factor of authentication, right? And that authentication happens uh, via all of the, no the, the, the nodes verifying that, you know, that the uh, proposed um, uh, authentication met method is, is, is correct. But what that does is it gives us our first use cases as well, right? So one of the ways that we're engendering a, uh, uh, a, a, a user first or a use case first approach is we're saying, well, what's the first thing we can build? And then what's the first thing that can be built, built off it, right? So the first thing we need to build, I believe is gonna be, you know, getting access to the network and, you know, authentication. So what are the things that can be built off that? Well, um, most likely, you know, the decentralized LastPass, um, a decentralized, you know, Fireblocks. And as I said, so this is the Fort Knox of the metaverse, a, a, decentralized way to, to have custodian services, which then can expand into, um, which then, then can expand into, you know, other blockchains. So once you have that, you can kind of uh, connect onto other blockchains and then submit, you know, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sign transactions onto them, but that is a phase two, right? So that's why I think the first things that we'll build, we build off the network, if we're really thinking about use case first in terms of roadmap uh, are the Fort Knox of the metaverse um, uh, use cases. And then after that, you have computation. And then, you know, in the, in the and that's, that's all the sort of enhancing blockchain sort of stuff. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, man, there's, there's so much that could, could occur, you know, everything from identity, an, a, a, a decentralized global identity network to biometrics, to medical records, to, but I don't like to, like to go there. I'd like to win the first things that we can win with engineering, as well as understanding the pathway to get to them. So there are several entrepreneurs now that already want to build these things off the network, you know, um, to because they've done it before. So, for example, one of our founding entrepreneurs, part of the founding team, but he's you know he's a task with building off the network. He just sold a company called Seamless Stocks to uh, um, to a private equity house, and it was a government. Uh, it was basically uh, DocuSign, but for governments, right? And he's like, look, if you can give me a network that does what you say it does in a GDPR compliant way, I will be able to sell the living crap out of it because this is exactly what we need. Right. That's an example of him using this um, ability to sign using things, you know, because currently I don't know about you guys, but my PA signs a lot of my documents. Right. Even it's even easier with DocuSign now. So, you know, this way you can have a biometric authentication that something was signed. And he's like, this is a, uh, a, you know, a need and you've got a GDPR compliance sort of way. And there are several other like weird use cases that have come up as well. Like there is one where, um, you know, uh, a um, a company contacted us that was doing facial recognition, right, um, for all sorts of purposes for governments and and uh, uh, stores and and memberships, etc. And they said the problem is that a lot of people don't. It's not GDPR compliant to um, store that information on a uh, centralized database in its in its purest form. In fact, it's it's not safe, right? So they were like, if you can provide this solution for us, where it's basically stored nowhere, but it can be pulled back when the user um, uh, requests it or when the user approves of it, then we've got, you know, millions and millions of use cases for, for you guys. But, you know, like I said, that's, that's in the far future. I like to think more uh, locally and more crypto community and, you know, get traction. I think that, you know, the, the storage of um, secrets and uh, private keys and, um, you know, and the basic computation and private storage functions um, is going to be the first thing. And then after that, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So focusing on winning that first layer uh, or building the protocol that uh, allows people to then go build other apps on top of it. Uh, when do you think that would happen? Like a, a point where here's everything you guys need, have fun. Um, I think we're looking probably about, uh, at about a year, a year and a half, depending on how many engineers that we can hire. P.S. If anyone is an engineer and listening to this and wants to work on something cool, hit me up. Um, but you know, we're, it, it really depends on how aggressively we can, we can hire very talented engineers. If we do, a, uh, do a good job, I think the first use cases could, um, start building on the network in probably a year. And then, you know, well, let's say a year to a year and a half. And then, you know, in the next year to year and a half um, would be the more advanced, um, you know, functions such as uh, cross-chain functionality, decentralized computations, uh, you know, uh, sorry, complex decentralized com uh, computations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool. Um, you may not know this answer yet, but a thought struck me. And I also see a, a community member ask this, um, I believe it was Brad, but energy, how does Nillian fit into the energy narrative? Uh, again, maybe you don't have that math yet, but, um, you know, compared to like, uh, proof of stake or proof of work, um, this adds like more energy consumption, right? Yeah. Well, energy is a factor of like, like you know, Hedera is, is very energy efficient because it doesn't utilize proof of work. Generally, things that don't utilize proof of work are a lot more energy efficient. You know, we're not doing, we're not even communicating between nodes where uh, it's client-server 
uh, architecture with uh, a computation that happens uh, on the node and then comes back to the requester or the result, uh, the, the, the person who is getting the result. And then that's, uh, that's where the reconstruction happens. So there actually isn't that much of a, uh, 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 an energy load. I would say it's gonna be one of the most energy efficient uh, decentralized networks. Just from like theoretically speaking, there, there isn't a reason because proof of work isn't, isn't used that, that, that this should be uh, you know, energy inefficient. Okay, cool. Uh, that, that's very helpful. Um, we got a, a few questions um, from Yuri uh, and a few others about the like the the passing of data that has been tampered with or is is not accurate or there's some error. Uh, we were talking about this offline before the call a little bit, but uh, can you explain like what happens if one of the nodes passes data uh, in the reconstruction process? That has a f uh, that has been screwed with in some way, uh, and I think you mentioned like when it's reconstructed, if more than if there's an error, more than like a third, something happens or it prevents errors up to a third. Can you just extrapolate on that a little bit? Yeah. So the algorithm itself, I mean, for the actual algorithm, we'd have to get Miguel on the line. But what my understanding is that the algorithm itself, um, uh, it, you know, it uses a form of error correction. I think it's called verifiable secret secret sharing or something like that, um, which has uh, which tolerates specific faults and or which tolerates faults. So it's like saying um, this algorithm allows for X percent of answers to be wrong, right? And still can get you the right result, right? And so that percentage um, will most likely be sent, set as, as the, at a Byzantine fault tolerant level, i.e. 33%. But, um, you know, you, you can basically, um, you can basically choose that, that that level of uh, error that uh, that you can receive from the decentralized nodes uh, while still being able to reconstruct the right result. It's it's an uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, by the way, we're getting a question about where to follow Nilly and, and and join the community. So can you um, mention how we can do that? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, there's, a Nilian, there's a Nilian Telegram channel, uh, but there's also a Nilian uh, Twitter. Um, honestly, guys, you guys have got this so early <laughs> that, uh, um, you know, that there, I guess the best way to do, that, do it would be to go to nilian.com, subscribe to uh, the email and then follow on, um, follow on Twitter. Uh, you know, we haven't, if you look at our website, we haven't even released our website. That's how early you are. So that's really a function of me being a friend of David for a, for a while. So happy to give you this, this alpha. I think there's, there, we, we've, we've um, tried to get feedback off a pre-release white paper, which I think you guys might have been sent. Um, you know, that, that will likely change slightly before we release the official version. Um, depending on feedback that we get, but we're really very like uh, community oriented and, and this is again why we're not doing like a phenomenally huge round with tons of VCs, despite the fact that you know the the big Silicon Valley guys are are coming coming for us. You know, we want to make sure that we 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 involve uh, the community from the ground up. So yes, sign up for the email, Twitter, um, and uh, I think tele Telegram and Discord, um, which are the links of which are on million.com. Yeah, uh, I just want to share my own excitement. Um, like the the team, and I would love to know a little bit more about the team, uh, or at, if you could share it with the group. But it's in, it's insane. Um, like the most A list team that one of the most A list teams I've ever seen in crypto. Uh, and knowing you, you're sort of anti VC, and you want to build community first. Uh, and I also love the idea of being like the reversed, um, the reverse I ICP in, in how you launch, uh, like not some big, massively overmarketed, overhyped, uh, project, but, but more like grassroots and, and building, uh, focused, which is exactly what you did with Hedera. Uh, like you guys did almost zero marketing, um, and, uh, and just focused on building, 
I think the uh, mistake we, you know, mm. if, if I was to say with Hedera, the thing that was that when that when we, we're not going to do now is that you know when I when the president uh, came on board, who I had very a very different opinion with, and who I to this day don't talk to, um, you know, when he came on board, um, he raised a hundred million at a six billion dollar vow, right? And that is that is not what I would do with with this. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we, and that, that wasn't, that wasn't my decision guys. <laughs> that was, that was someone else leveraging the hard work that I had put in to create the community and the momentum. And then what happened there will not happen here. You, it, it, I feel was a, was slightly a betrayal of trust, you know? And so, um, but you know, all's well that ends well, like Hedera is a phenomenal product, excuse me, protocol. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not disappointed about the way it, it showed, it turned out, but I would just, um, you know, handle things a little differently at this point in time. So, um, so yeah, so so yeah, you're right. You know, we, we, I'm not building this team because I want people to be impressed by the team. I'm building it because they are actually really good at what they do. You know, uh, and that's a really important part of this. Uh, Can you tell us want... who who they are? Uh, yeah. Um, so. You know, I've got, I can't say the two people who have built unicorns before, right? Because they're still about to sign, right? But if I told you them, they would be on, we, we, we would be on TechCrunch, you know? And they're coming on full, like pretty much, one of them's coming on full time. The other one's like taking care of a whole, he's got a team basically behind him, right? Um, but the chief scientist is Miguel de Vega. He, he holds a PhD in mathematics. Um, you know, he's got 30 global patents over the last 22 years. His, pa his, his patents still govern the flow of data packets between uh, transatlantic internet cables to this day. Like he literally govern his, his, his inventions govern how data flows through the internet, you know? And uh, he's just got like a very blue chip. I mean, he's a cryptography advisor to the Royal United Services Institute, Rusi which is, you know, the UK's leading defense and security think tank. I mean, the guy's just brilliant. In 2000, the, the way this happened, the way I met him is in 2017, he came to, uh, he got introduced to me by a PhD in machine learning at NYU. And she's like, hey, you got to talk to this guy. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, so I ended up speaking to him, but he, and he had come up with an evolution of zero knowledge proof, said KP. And I was like, that's interesting, but a faster Zcash is not going to cut the cheese for me, right? So go back in 2019, he came back to me. So I got this decentralized network that is GDPR compliant. I looked at it and he's been thinking about identity, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, you know, not really that interesting. Maybe uh, in, the, in the long run, yes, but, but, but you can't approach identity as a frontal motive. You have to, my, my research shows me that companies like Unico and the ones in India and in Singapore, which have massive quantities of identity, on a district on a centralized network do it because they solve problems not related to identity but related to fraud prevention or passports so blah 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 blah. right so in 2021 is like hey i got a whole new way of of um so you know my point is through this time uh i was sort of uh honing his thoughts and his uh his invention and uh you know getting it to a point where uh, where, you know, we came up with basically the, the technology behind, behind Nillian, you know, and, uh, so here's the inventor and chief scientist. And then, you know, we've got, um, Alex Page, who's the, uh, CEO. He's, um, he was part of the founding team for me, uh, for, with me for, uh, Metalink. And then, um, also helped me build the BitCloud community. I'm actually the owner of the BitCloud uh, Telegram community. <laughs> if you look up the, uh, I'm I remember like, I was you added me. I was like number nine in BitCloud. <laughs> yeah, um, and then you know he's he's been a co-founder of a two of two uh, B two C companies, and then we've got uh, Rob Leslie, who's the president. He founded several companies. One that went uh, public. He's won a bunch of tech and innovation awards. Um, and, you know, he's regularly a speaker at uh, the World Economic Forum. So, you know, that's some of the team. But then we have just hustlers, guys. Like we, did, we did a talk at Cambridge and three of the, you know, the, the three, um, sorry, two of the three 
interviewers actually ended up joining our team and two of the, two of the listeners did as well uh, from the computer science faculty. And that's just awesome, right? Like these, these, these kids are the smartest kids in, in the United Kingdom, Cambridge University. And, you know, we had a talk last night and uh, again, like my, my inbox today was flooded with, with people who, who want to join the, the, the protocol. So it's not just the people who have done it before, it's the hunger and the culture of obsession and of um, of focus on you know uh, the ecosystem on, on execution, uh, innovation, and the and you know the eventual development of the ecosystem that creates you know this 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 team. Plus, when we add the next two or three um, senior people, it's it's going to be huge. Man, it's so exciting. Uh, I I feel like in crypto, there's a lot of projects built. Uh, by nerds, and they, but their their carcasses are kind of left behind because they don't have marketing. Like they don't know how to get the cool thing that they built out into the world. And then someone else does it who has better marketing. And so like you have marketing, but you also like, this is a very nerd, deep tech, nerdy project. Uh, and you're solving uh, and building something amazing. So um, I think what everyone's wondering is like, when token? <laughs> uh, how 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 can like what what should we do uh to get exposure to uh to the project i know we okay. talked about like okay. following so socials are... but yeah <laughs> so um the token i hope will be released pretty soon right because i don't want too many people i don't want this to be a, an icp i want the token to be released and then people to buy up small you know chunks of it and then you know at a at a lower valuation and ride it up. That's how you get communities like Ethereum, like Solana. You get these people who buy tokens and then defend it as it goes up, right? So, so I want to release it pretty soon um, for the you know for the uh, the uh, seed investors. We're just going to unlock them right away because the truth is, I would personally and the other guys who have started billion dollar projects would personally buy the tokens at two to three to probably even four X what the seed investors are getting in. By the way, the team was not allowed access to the seed because we would have dominated the entire round, right? Um, you know, And so, so um, I would encourage you to stay tuned to the uh, project and see when it first launches. And then, you know, um, nibble at it. And this is not investment advice, but if you want to um, buy some of the token, then then nibble at it, you know, uh, as it 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 kind of, it floats. There's also going to be um, NFT keys. Uh, uh, NFTs. Uh, we, we're we're thinking about rewarding because we want to do as much as we can for the community. I don't know if it'll be an access pass or keys or something, but you know NFTs that are released to the early members of the community. Um, and can't say too much about them, but probably worth getting one of those. Um, and you know, that will, that will, uh, uh, that will, um, you know, ingrain you as part of the community. Um, I haven't really talked about that ever. <laughs> this, this is the first time I've actually even, uh, said that that might be coming. Um, and then there's a learn to earn program, um, that is coming up, uh, and probably competitions, uh, that are occurring throughout the, um, the, the, the time, uh, you know, so my point is there are going to be ways for the community to, to start getting, you know, um, um, chunks of, uh, I think, tokens for doing specific things, you know. Um, and, of course, we are always looking for talented and passionate team members um, and people who can help us get to alternative um, communities that are interested. So, you know, with Hedera, the funny thing is the community that really uh, got us uh, notoriety was Mike Maloney's Hidden Secrets of Money. It's a gold uh, community, right? But they were really interested in alternative blockchain mechanisms for some reason, right? But any sort of introductions like that to podcasts, to interesting people, to intellectuals, you know, that all makes a difference. And we're thanking people with, with token grants, people who, who, who can help us with that sort of thing. This is, this is really a Web3 project. So anything that the, that the community can, can offer is... Is, is a big deal for us. So I hope that answers your question, you know, with, uh, with multiple, um, in, in multiple directions. It, it does, yeah. Um, you know, I, th I think one of the things that people in our community feel is 
overwhelmed with like the vast amount of knowledge and news and things happening in crypto and Web3. There's new NFT launches all the time. There's new DeFi protocols, a new yield in our case is offered on Stargate and you have money on Anchor, on Luna and you want to move it. So um, how, like, how have you made money in, in crypto? Because it, I, I almost feel like you, you only do like a couple things per year. Uh, is that true? Like, like you, you don't even, and we can, maybe this can also tie into, um, what you're bullish on as narratives, uh, or, or actually we can just even focus on projects, uh, and like how you've picked those, but, uh, given what's happening in, in crypto and there's so much going on now, and I would say in 2015, you really only needed to understand like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And like, that was pretty much it. Uh, and it was really easy to know everything that was going on in crypto. Now it's it's literally impossible. Um, so what would you suggest for people who like feel overwhelmed in sure. that way? So, okay. So for me personally, there are two modes, right? I have DGEN and I have Builder, right? Or let's say DGEN, Trader, or Builder. <laughs> uh, and uh, I can't do, I, they're, they're almost like mutually exclusive in my mind. But um, before I was, you know, in the interim period of building, uh, you know, uh, Reserve or Hedera, I was a DGEN. I was like searching for yield, searching for uh, uh, um, things to invest in, aping into ridiculous projects, NFTs, whatnot, right? Um, and what I find is that that informs you about how to think about crypto. Uh, it, it allows you to be, as Bain says, born in the dark, right? And it, it gives you that like sense of what, what, what product might actually work for some, you know, to something to build. There's no way I could know that Nillion will be successful or, you know, or have a sense of it without having that, uh, that, that pulse of, of crypto, right? And um, I think you would be the same, David, like, you know, you, you guys created yield farming. You knew, you, you, you did it yourself first, you understood it, and then you understood what the, what the market needed, right? So you went from degen mode to building mode. And I think that that's like a, that's a, um, a main, um, a, a really important thing to, 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 to note. But to your question of, um, of what, uh, you know, what, what you would do as someone who is um, looking at all these options and alternatives is honestly focus on the thing that gives you the most uh, uh, return, but also the thing that makes you the happiest to, to focus on. So, you know, uh, for me, it's not really, um, it, part, most of it for me is in, uh, is in um, finding early stage projects and tokens and investing in them or taking them, you know, uh, or, cre or uh, helping them build. Now, that happens very, very rarely, but I would rather just invest. Um, but, you know, that's something that, that, that I think provides a lot of um, value for me. I think as I become more and more, uh, you know, in inverted commas, post-economic or successful, uh, I start to do that less and I start to look for things which could uh, be very, very cool to get involved in. Right. So I think there was, there's been a progression for me from, you know, looking at a lot of things and then narrowing down to the things that made me the most return and then becoming kind of successful there. And then narrowing down again to the things which are slightly uh, more committed. But so, it's, uh, you know, I'm not jumping from project to project. Uh, I'm kind of focusing on, but that takes a lot of time. I call that process waiting. So while I'm degening and deploying, I'm kind of waiting, waiting for something that I can kind of push into as, uh, you know, uh, as a more focused effort, right? Similar to, I guess, what you did. I, I know you, you, you know, you looked at a lot of things, um, figured, you know, out how to yield, you know, how to yield farm and then, and then really narrow it down into creating something around that, that niche and, and use case. And then, you know, and then eventually building out, um, you know, now, now I'm at a point where uh, I'm mostly focused on, um, you know, bigger ideas and that sort of thing, because I can take that, that, that sort of concept level risk, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible insight. Um, it's almost like you're, you're collecting as much information. You go through a phase of collecting as much information as possible and, and like, uh, 
filtering that down to, to something that really, really excites you, or, or it allows you the knowledge to then look at opportunities that seem really exciting based on this new knowledge that you've built up. And then you can go focus all your brain juice into that, that one thing yes. because you have yes. built up all that knowledge. Yes. And now, I, what's, now what's that... cool about, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, I think what's really cool about you is that part of your information gathering phase is that you surround yourself. Uh, not only do you do it yourself, but you also surround yourself with these contrarian weird people in your own, in your own words um, who feed you information beyond what you're doing yourself. So you can't do everything, but you'll also open up hundred percent. That's you open, that's so you open up everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, it's so, so important that the people that send me ideas and send me stuff. I mean, the problem is I have so much of it coming in that it's almost overwhelming. As, as you know, like I forget half the shit they will send me because it's just got so much, right? And I do. And so, you know, uh, it's hard for me to get. And, and it's actually the reason I don't do many of these talks because if the, the noise starts to become fucking overwhelming, you know? Uh, so I, uh, I tend to... One, one thing I will say that I wanted to caveat that on is that I have friends who are extremely successful as well, who are traders and they focus on uh, identifying contrarian trades or identifying really sort of high alpha trades. And those guys get really obsessed with the specific idea and then they go through with it. Uh, and I love those guys. Like, you know, uh, I, I respect that modality of, of uh, operation so, so, so deeply because they get really obsessed and then they convince themselves of a contrarian uh, narrative and then they kind of execute. And the ones who are sort of, who, who really understand it and who get it, uh, it's a different model for them. So you don't always have to go and build something. You can trade your way through something. I don't know, Dave, like you're the one who I would have to ask if there are you know, people who, who yield from their way to extraordinary riches. There probably are. But, you know, um, for me, I've seen the traders and the builders create just huge chunks of, chunk, chunks of wealth. But, but a very common theme is that, you know, they do find a truffle or are contrarian or, you know, um, just different from, from the consensus or the herd. Yeah. Understanding current meta and narratives, super, super important. And I think that's what we're talking about now is just getting as deeply involved as you can, collecting information, surrounding yourself with people who are doing the same thing, ideally contrarian where they're in areas outside of what you're an expert in. And all that feeds into your brain to help you direct what thing you're going to take directional exposure on, whether it's Luna or Matic before Luna or some new narrative now like Stargate, which is um, which is part of like the multi-chain uh, cross-chain narrative. So speaking of narratives, um, what excites you the most for 2022? If we can even do short-term or long-term. Um, so let me think that's a... You know, I think that um, that uh, because I'm currently in a building phase, I haven't scoured my, I'm not in smelling truffles right now, right? I'm in build, you know? And so it's a different skill set for me. So my, my answers may not be completely accurate, but I do see a lot of momentum in longevity and biotechnology. Uh, I do see them in, obviously I believe in, um, the evolution of decentralized technology via computations, et cetera. Um, I feel like social tokens and, you know, a Web3 social network is going to express itself in some way. I just don't know how, right? It was like in 2017, I was like, man, these NFTs, they're fucking the shit. This is going to be great. I just didn't know how. I remember saying to um, one of the key people in NFTs back then, I was like, this is going to be so huge. The problem is I just don't know when it's going to be, right? And so I'm not willing to, to build on this. This is when I was I was the, um, the highest bidder in the first ever live auction of NFTs. And I was like, this is going to be massive, right? And, but the problem is I was like, I don't think I want to build this because it's, it's, it's going to take several years. It could be take a decade for this to get to where it's at. Same thing with social tokens. Don't know when, think it's going to happen, right? Um, and I don't know the, the exact um, way to make that bet. 
And then, um, you know, I, th I still think NFTs are going to be huge. Um, one of one NFTs or NFTs with increasing utility or bespoke utility. So, for example, there are NFTs with, with which have uh, inbuilt oracleized uh, functions. So, you, know, you can have an NFT that reflects, just as an example, like the growth of a rainforest or something like that, right? Um, or NFTs that reflect the weather in London or something like that. Like the things that are possible with, you know, with these, with decentralized, uh, you know, it's, it's just super, super cool. So, um, so yeah, uh, yeah. I, if you had, if you had come to me, uh, you know, before, uh, I would have, I would have uh, had more interesting things to, to, to talk about, but, you know, th those I think are the, the narratives that excite me. I'm, I'm happy to, to also uh, tell you sort of things that I'm not so much aping into, but, you know, sort of excited about in, as a result of those narratives. So, you know, yeah, like, you know, um, contrarian ways of thinking. I mean, I really, I do like Zcash, right? Um, because... I just think that privacy coins haven't had their day in the sun yet. And there is good reason for that sometimes, but not many people are talking about them, you know, but they haven't, of all the currencies that hit uh, their, their all-time high past 2017, privacy coins never did that, right? So I think that there is probably some narrative uh, 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 potentiality there. And then um, I like the concept of food inflation. This is what my truffle pig told me. So, uh, you know, I've been in uh, NYSC, MOS, so Mosiac for a while now. And, um, you know, he, I bought it at like $20 at 60. I think it's going to go higher to 100. But again, not financial advice. <laughs> this is just stuff that I'm putting money into. So, you know. What, what is food inflation? What do you mean? Food inflation is, is, uh, Basically, you know, the way that supply and demand of uh, the, 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 uh, commoditized, the commoditized uh, um, uh, parts of the, the food chain um, uh, become, becomes more expensive because of several factors, uh, thus leading to, you know, increased food prices where a company like uh, Mosdia could, could would would experience a uh a increase in share price so yeah that makes uh, sense yeah okay uh by the way i'm changing gears here I, I think we just got a really good question from scott uh, uh by the way are you able to see the chat on your side oh me there, uh, there may be a way to click uh chat or uh, on the bottom of your screen to see it but i'll read it to you anyway uh I'm going to read it out loud. Obtaining consensus more quickly, more efficiently, and more securely seems like a no-brainer for a successful project. Uh, are you concerned that taking around a year to get to market will allow others to jump to the front of the line and establish themselves first? Um, any whispers or rumors on similar projects? And I'm going to add a third question, which is high level. Um, I hear this all the time in people uh, messaging me saying, hey, I have this idea. Um, like, can we sign an NDA or uh, can, you know, like I'm scared of other people stealing it. How, I know how I respond to those, but for people who are concerned about someone stealing their idea, um, how would you, how do you handle that question? Because I'm sure you get a lot of those. Well, you know, sometimes there's a good reason to sign an NDA because um, of regulatory concerns. But typically speaking, you know, if it's a good idea, several people are going to have it, you know, um, you know, I was talking to Devin and he was like, man, there were a bunch of open, there were a bunch of uh, NFT marketplaces and we were the one that just kept going through the winter. Right. Um, so I'm not, I'm not concerned because um, there is a frontier of technology and a lot of people are pushing on that frontier and it will not just be the, t you know, and I think, um, First mover advantage is important, but you know so is differentiation. And uh, and first mover advantage isn't like who launches first. It's also who gets the zeitgeist, who captures you know uh, the market. And we just have a phenomenal go to market team and a go to market strategy. And my entire focus is ecosystem. So I don't really care if we launch. I, I don't know. I 
I, I see competitors within the um, decentralized uh, um, like cross-chain protocol sort of thing. Uh, none of them have great marketing and none of them have great product market fit right now, but they might like, you know, guys like Layer Zero or Synapse, et cetera. But we're not really playing in that game. We don't have to win that game. If any of the use cases, if we win that game, that's great, right? But if any of the use cases that I uh, uh, expounded on in this talk uh, actually eventuate, this thing will be a decabillion dollar protocol, right? It, it, just, it just takes one. And if one of them propagates, then the nature of the protocol whereby the information that is kept on the network uh, starts to compound and starts to build means that there's less friction for the other use cases. So, you know, if I, you do use it for authentication in some, some way, shape or form, or you do use it to, you know, store your passwords, or you do use it to, for some sort of uh, identity thing, or you do use it for, um, you know, KYC, AML, that information becomes very valuable for all other use cases, including the decentralized, um, um, you know, cross-chain solutions and, and uh, you know, uh, decentralized decks, et cetera, et cetera. Does that, does that make sense? So, so I'm, not, I'm not overly concerned because A, I don't see that many people pushing towards this. It's firstly, it's very techn technically difficult to have created a permissionless decentralized SM, you know, uh, network that, that performs with the same security um, guarantees as an SMPC network. That is freaking hard, right? I think we are the first to do it. Um, and, uh, or one of the first to do it, there, there, there are people who are trying to do it via permission network. Um, but again, it's, it's go it's scaling to where the puck's going. They, those people also have assessed their teams They're you know, a, the technology is inferior B it's, uh, sort of permission and, and, and C it's, uh, it's, uh, just an inferior team and go to market. Right. Um, so no, I'm not, I'm not afraid of competition, you know, uh, I expect there to be, to hopefully be competition if, uh, you know, as we live in a competitive world where we're all chasing the frontier of technology, but, you know, um, there's nothing we can do to like rush that process except hire more engineers. And like I said, even if we did hire the engineers, you've got to translate the mathematics into engineering. The thing is, we'll be able to express interest in this via a token and uh, integrate that token into the um, security of the protocol, um, you know, before the network itself goes live, and that that isn't that isn't rare, right? You can you can do that. So yeah, yeah, great answer. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we have another. I'm just reading questions mm -hmm. by the way. So I, we have. Oh, yeah, uh, do you want me to, I, I can see them now. So okay. Do you want to, uh, I'll just I'll probably pick them since you're you're okay. busy thinking and, and speaking. Uh, so by the way, anyone else who has questions now is a great time to post them. Uh, and I'll, I'll pick the best one. So John's asking, how do you make yourself in, uh, indispensable at some point? Um, cause you, you've like, you've launched so many of these and they, they've all been massive home runs. Uh, and now you're involved in multiple projects and they're all individually massive, potentially world changing projects. Um, so do you do like zero to one and then you replace yourself? Is that how you've set these up in the past? Uh, you know, in the past, it wasn't, it was, it was forced upon me. So with Hedera, I just uh, had a disagreement with the president, right? And I kind of got ousted, you know, with the, uh, but, you know, I, I keep, I, I'm still, you know, it's still my founding team. And, you know, we, I, I still have a lot of love for uh, Hedera as a protocol, et cetera. Um, and you're and probably your biggest bag. <laughs> it's my biggest bag as well. Always oh, one of my biggest bags. And so, you know, um, well, you know, so, so what I started to realize from Hedera was I am built in a way that I can create zero to one, right? Um, and I did it for Hedera, I did it for, for Reserve. And it's just uh, the experience that I have is, is very unique and special. And so I could go through, you know, how I kind of do it, but, you know, our, our mutual friend, Andrew Yo, he says, he says, dude, there's just a magic that you are able to do within this, within, you know, I've, ne he's, I've never seen anything like that before. And it is true. Like there is just something that, um, 
is just about the way I am that allows me to do that. Now, I don't always replace myself. I got replaced in Hedera. And then I realized that, man, once the company raises $100 million, or once the company has passed a specific threshold, it gets this momentum on its own. Not, not that I want to be replaced, but I become less and less relevant, you know? And I have no ego to want to, like, to, to want to be the visual leader of, of, of a company, right? So, um, so my thing is, when, but then again, like RSR has really, you know, several times in the past, um, Nevin has called me and said, hey, I really need your help on this. And I've just jumped in, you know, fully again to, to kind of help out. It's, it's like these, these are uh, companies that once I have created an exponential effect, and that, that takes a lot of time. Like I've been working, you think about it, like, oh, build it and, Man, I've been talking to Miguel since 2017. We've spent countless hours discussing uh, the technology. You know, this has been four years up to this point. So what people see here is like this flash in the pan over. It's not like that, right? Like you know, there's a lot of energy and effort that that, that goes into this. Hedera was less of a uh, of that sort of thing, but you know, Nillian definitely was you know was uh, was was more like that. So I know where I'm very good. Um, I like to stay involved longer term with the projects, um, but I do understand that there are people who are very, very good and probably better than me at taking things from one to 10. And I don't have the ego to want to do that or rather to, to um, I want to do it, right? And I, you know, I'm going to be staying involved in, in, in these companies, but I also know that there are some really fucking great killers out there. You know, and so I'm happy as well to be like, you're better than me, you know, and be like, you know, and, and the other thing is like, what you, what the skill set you need for zero to one is, is, is kind of a little bit more cowboyish, right? It's, you yep. think fast, you break things, you move fast, you break things. But as a company matures, you got to be a lot more careful. Like Hedera couldn't have, to, to get the council on board, they had to re rein in the, the marketing a little bit, I think. You know, so and that was that was like raining me, and you know, so you know, so uh, so yeah. Hope that hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, uh, a great answer, man. Uh, I really like this question from Tyler. He's he's asking, what is the best advice you've ever received? Like, what's what's the first golden nugget that pops up in your brain as as I ask that question? depends on which period of my life. <laughs> uh, how, how about in the last, uh, in the last five years? In the last five years. Um, oh, yeah, I know what it is. Okay. This is a practical piece of advice. All right. So I have like various philosophical pieces of advice, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, one one that's, that strikes me is like uh, that that uh, you are the judge you are the judge of uh, the time of of what you do with your time like you shouldn't you know in the end if you get rich if you get you know, you know if you go party if you you know you're you're you know you should be the only judge it's it's a it's literally a fair playing field right. But, uh, but that's like philosophical. The best practical advice I've received is, man, this is crazy, but there's a little hack in Audible, okay, the, the, the app. And a mentor said to me, probably, it, was, it wasn't five years ago, it was slightly more, but he goes, hey, uh, you can add multiple people onto an Audible account to share an Audible account, uh, A, right? And then B, what you should be doing is just keeping in like your headphones, right? Uh, in uh, your ear, uh, when you're walking, when you're showering, when you're shitting, when you're like doing, uh, going to the gym, etc. I, you know, even when you're getting a massage, just keep it in there. It's not important that you absorb everything, right? But the, he said to me, the, um, the effect of just playing audio, audible audio books that you that you or your friends or you know high level people uh, enjoy uh, the effect of that 
over one year will be more wisdom. The f effect of that, oh, sorry, one year will be not much. Two years will be more wisdom. Three years will be uh, a, a different education. And over the fourth and fifth years, you will have lived in another, uh, another life. So I could not agree with that more. What I'm expressing to you now is a small pill of the things that I've learned over the time through experience, et cetera. And it's not even a well-filtered pill, but you know, I keep listening to audiobooks, listening to things uh, with my downtime. And what, 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 what is important is realizing the compound effect that that has. All these thoughts and ideas all percolating through my subconscious um, that somehow just made me a lot smarter, right? And these, these uh, answers that came to me and these concepts that I adopted that optimized my life in such a way that, you know, I was able to accomplish things that I've accomplished um, have occurred because a lot because of the way I think, right? I'm no different to everyone. I'm like five foot eight, you know, Asian dude. Um, and yes, I probably have like a base level of raw intelligence. I mean, my IQ is like 100 last time I checked it, like 130 or something. It's not like super high, right? But the compound effect of this, uh, this this uh, optimization of time and thinking uh, has really led to so so you so has really led to like Alzheimer's outcomes. So it's that plus it's the fact that I can invite people to an, I can invite as many devices as I want into an Audible account. So as I Dave, you know, all my smart friends, hey, come into my Audible account and then let's just buy books. And when, when you when you buy a book, put your credit card on you, you know buy a book and then, uh, and then we all share the same thing. So I'm constantly getting updates on books that are added to the account of smart people. And I've got like probably a thousand books in that account now uh, where I haven't read you know, half of them, that's fine. Half of them I played and they were shitty, that's fine as well. And half of them I didn't absorb, but the ones that I did, even if it was 20%, it compounds into like the utilization, the full utilization of, your, of the most potent part of a human being which is your mind, your thinking. It's a, it's a primary, um, uh, you know, a tool of, or weaponry of a human being and thus, you know, honing it via uh, this, you know, via earpods and an iPhone and Audible um, and, or, you know, podcasts or whatever is, is extraordinary, especially when you, all you're doing is using, is using downtime. I, I'm, First of all, uh, extremely hurt that I'm not added to your Audible oh, account yeah. yet. So you. af you. after this call, you got to add me. Yeah. It sounds okay. awesome. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned compounding, this compounding effect of the things that are happening in your conscious brain that perhaps then get processed by your uh, uh, subconscious brain. Um, and th this is, reminds me of that, that famous quote from Naval, uh, where he says, you know, play long-term games with, with long-term people. Um, and because there's this compounding effect on, on relationships uh, by doing that. And I'm just curious, I know we talked on, about this briefly earlier, but like, this seems like something that you're so good at, um, both in, in people, uh, but also like in health and clearly the acquisition of knowledge. Uh, so like, why has, I think this is actually your biggest North star is, um, and in fact, like your network and I've met a lot of the people in your network and your friends and everyone kind of calls you like, like the truffle pig or that you have this like truffle pig farm and you've surrounded yourself with people who are truffle pigs themselves. And they just go and find truffles and like bring them back to, to you, uh, in some way. And, and you also are also a truffle pig and you give value to others in your network. Um, I'm just curious if you could like talk about that and, and like what other areas of life um, that North Star has added value to. And also like how to do it. Like how do you find these people? Uh, so I'm not going to say that this is the ideal way to live, to surround yourself with truffle pigs. It does create certain outcomes, but if you're optimizing towards things like happiness and sometimes like, you know, being around people who make you feel good or, you know, so, so, you know, for example, I have a friend of mine, he's a fucking great guy. I 
meet a lot of girls around him, etc. He's just not like very bright, right? Mm -hmm. He's not a truffle pig, except, but I like him in my life. You know, it's not all about finding truffle pigs. It's about the optimization of your life. But I do have truffle pigs around me, right? And I do like to keep them around me because I respect their intelligence. I respect. And so, and I, I, I personally, I think I'm somewhat of a, um, of a, of a truffle finder. Um, how I find them, how I attract them is uh, a uncompromising uh, desire for truth and for results, okay? Sometimes I don't even know how the result happens. Like before the Nash equilibrium was invented, people were still acting by way of the Nash equilibrium. It's just the optimal way to act. There are forces at play out there, which we don't know, which, you know, we're, we're a smart species. We're not, we're not like, you know, necessarily, uh, we don't know everything that's happening to us, right? We can't predict the future. And so when you think about it in that way, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the end result is that I think I focus on just the result, right? Like, so is this person, has this person, is it a guy I know, for example, so I, there's a guy I know who's very smart, he kind of is crazy. And he, uh, he, ha, you know, he come, he came up with the calls for uh, Mosiac and Zcash and, and Chainlink. And then this is the guy wow. I know, yeah, and this is a guy I know who is also, who is not smart, who's just a fucking like big teddy bear, who every time he gives me something, like I'm wearing an aura ring right now, he's like, hey, I got this thing, it's a seed round of this like ring, and it's going to be, I'm in the seed round of aura ring, right? I'm like, how did that happen? And then he got me into like several cannabis deals, which uh, were uh, like 100x, I mean, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how this one guy who's just ultra smart and this other guy, they're both like, you know, they're both truffle pigs in a way, but I don't understand, like, you know, I do tend to look for people who are intelligent, but I don't use that as my North Star. I use this as my North Star result, right? Can this, and not just result for that person, result for the people around him. I know a lot of the people, for example, that you go out with them and, uh, you know, they get girls and you don't. That is, or they get rich and you don't. Bad result. Bad, 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 bad result. I, I think what your, uh, I, I think a way that you manifest this is you're obsessed with giving value to others. And I think if there, we have, we have like five minutes left here, but one of the things I'm kind of reading between the lines and what I've also felt in our relationship is like, you're like obsessed with giving value to others. Uh, and, yeah, and, yeah. and then and people are, therefore obsessed with giving value back to you and then, like you don't even do it in a way where like you expect anything in return it's just like it's just who you are and but you you are obviously you you are careful about who you allow into your circle um but but for those select few uh whether it's family or a friend with a health issue uh or uh, someone like me you just like you're constantly giving value back yeah, well, you know, if I if I can give value, yeah, you're right, actually. Like, there are times where I meet someone, like I, I met Nick uh, Candy the other day, and I was like, man, I can't give any value to this guy. I just didn't form a relationship, right? Like, you know, uh, he built one Hyde Park in London. It's just different environment. You know, I said, I basically was like, look, if, there's, if I can be a crypto resource for you, great. You know, uh, if I can't, you know, you can maybe invest a little bit in some of my uh, companies, but... I, you know, I don't really have anything that can cr create a, a, a large amount of value for you. And that's fine, right? Um, but, you know, where I can, I try and deliver what, not just value, but scalable value. So it doesn't take much of my time. It's not like I'm giving, you know, several hours of my day to deliver a piece of value. I'm like, this introduction will help or this, uh, what does this person need? And sometimes I get to a point in a, a conversation, I'm like, Man, I, I don't know how, but the question I ask is, um, so what, how can I help you? Like, what is, I've, I've actually been doing that more and more these days. I'm like, what do you need? Like, how can I help you? Who do you need to be introduced to? What do you need to know? What's the thing that's going on in your life, which is creating the most pain or the most suffering and allow me to help you to do that, you know? And you, you know, it doesn't matter if I, if I do that for a bad person, it, ta it, it takes like a minute of my time or five minutes of my time. It's totally fine. Maybe they're just on their journey in you know uh and they haven't figured out how to be a good person yet or something i don't really quite mind um you know adding 
uh, adding value, but you, you are, you are right. Like that's, that's how I find um, adding value. And as I said before, focusing on the results around people, when I hang around people, do I win? Yes. Continue. Do I not win? then you know diminish the amount of time i spend with them but still keep adding a ton of value does that make sense yeah yeah it's awesome um okay dude we got three minutes left uh by the way everyone who's on this call we're still doing a q a for yield farming so uh we're going all day here so there's a link i, I posted earlier that's in the circle community uh andrew any last words of wisdom or or thoughts you want to share uh, obviously i think we should talk about uh, Nilly, and again, for anyone who just joined, um, check out the, uh, we, we have tons of posts on how to get involved in Nillian. Uh, there's almost no one on the planet who even knows about Nillian yet, despite some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world being involved with this. So I'm going to pay, post the links now. Yeah, we're still, and we're still hiring. So, <laughs> you know, yep. man, any, anyone who joined the team at this point in time, for Hedera or Reserve just made so much like insane amounts of money. So, you know, uh, I think this might be the same thing. Maybe, maybe not. Can't guarantee it. But, you know, um, looking looking very good. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you want uh, final thoughts? Is that, is that what you yeah, want? Yeah, yeah. Um, in what space? You want to be more specific? <laughs> We've really um, covered a lot in this. We did. We did, yeah. Uh, I, I would say... Uh, honestly, I mean, I, like the, the stuff that we covered is, is good enough. Um, what we can do is, is just close out. Uh, and, um, by the way, like, I don't know if you, you haven't seen the chat, but like everyone loves you. This has been amazing. Uh, like, I, I think you've changed a lot of lives just by hopping on this call and we're going to, um, share the recording with, with a lot of others and it's going to be uh, posted online. So, a lot of people are, are in our community are going to see this who weren't able to attend. Um, Nillian sounds uh, really, really cool. And I uh, can't wait to, to keep following along. Uh, again, oh, the, I would, I would oh, say one thing, uh, closing yeah. thought. I would say, I would say most people have the assessment of risk wrong, right? The risk of what they do with their lives, et cetera. So, you know, you, 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 you join, looking at like, you know, if you're a part of this program, you're probably doing reasonably well, right? Then, you know, you can afford to take more risk, right? And um, don't be afraid to take that like jump, especially if you find something, you know, I, 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 I talk to lawyers all the time, like, man, you, you work two years in a law firm you've, or you've got a great degree. You will never ever be starred for a job. You can take as much risk as you want right now, right? And so, you know, um, the downside isn't that bad, right? Especially in first world countries, which I'm assuming a lot of these people are, you know, um, and the upside isn't just financial, it's a better story with your, for your life, you know? And I think in the end, like I, like I said, you are, you are the single most important arbiter of truth of your, the way you spend your time. And if you do it in such a way that is, you know, inspiring, um, for the risks that you take, or you know, that where you're, where you, where you, you, you took the risks that you want to take, then I think that that's a life well spent. So you know, um, my that, that would be my my parting thought. I agree. Uh, as you know, I I take on a lot of risk, and I think if you have a good fiat collection job, uh, or you're in general good at collecting uh, fiat, like launching businesses or whatnot, then you can definitely take on most likely more risk than you have. And uh, especially if you're young. Uh, and and the, there's actually a, some interesting math that I included. Uh, Andrew, you're not aware of this, but in the university on um, comparing like two individuals, one that takes on a little bit more risk on a yearly basis than, than the other, um, where the, the basket of risk that they've taken can have outsized returns compared to like the low risk basket. And even if it's just like a five to 10% allocation of their time or their resources, like that person massively outperforms by orders of magnitude, the person who took literally zero risk. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. By the uh, way, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling everyone to like go <laughs> ape, ape into the nearest shit coin. Don't do that. <laughs> I was talking about time and <laughs> the things that you're doing with your life, you know? So, yeah. 
Yep. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you, everyone. We're going to see you in the Q&A. Andrew, uh, this was a pleasure. And um, I think we're hanging out. We're doing we're like going on a safari soon. So we have to yes, talk about that yes, later. Yes, yes. Safari and, and hopefully much more. I've been talking to, to our, our mutual friend about some, some other things, maybe the Caribbean or something. We'll see. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. See you. Bye. All right. Bye.